Hello, I'm Larson the Wolf, and this is Anodyne. Anodyne is a 2D action-adventure game that is a throwback to the classic 2D Zelda games of the NES and SNES era. Anodyne was made in 2013 by the indie studio... Oh my sweet Jesus. We're gonna pronounce it Analgasek. Analgasek is composed of Han Tian Chien Hogan and Hyoin Kataka. I did the best with those names, I'm terrible with Eastern names, please forgive me. Hey guys, Larson here. I just wanted to point out some inconsistencies I found. Um, so the names I listed were from uh, Steam, I believe, and also from the Wikipedia entry for Anodyne, but in the outro they have completely different names here with Sean and, and Jonathan, so I just wanted to recognize that. Anodyne is a product of the last years they had in college, and they developed it during that time, and it is a labor of love. It was released on Windows, Mac, Linux, and Android for $10. Anodyne follows a young adventurer named, well, Young. He sets off in his world to find and protect the Briar. You wake up in a weird random place and go through some tutorial rooms. You meet a hooded character simply named Sage. He explains that in order to protect the Briar, you must collect these cards to grow more powerful, and eventually you will be strong enough to protect the Briar. This sets you up for the typical MacGuffin seeking you will need to proceed the game's story along. The cool part is, the cards double as narrative pieces, as they are pictures of items, bosses, or characters, and on each of them is also a description or statement in reference to that card's particular picture. As I said before, Anodyne takes inspiration from the classic 2D Zelda games, but there are still a few unique design choices that Analgasek made that make the game its own. First, and the most obvious, is the fact that rather than having a sword, Yun wields a broom. It's functionally the same as a sword. Why? I have no freaking clue, but it is. As you progress in the game, you also get a few attachments that give you some more combat choices such as one for a wider damage box and one for longer reach. However, you can only have one of these attachments equipped at a time, so depending on your combat style, you'll find yourself switching to different attachments depending on the enemies you encounter. Yun's broom can also suck up these dust piles that he carries until you use your broom again. Doing so places the stored dust on the ground. Placement and general use of this function is a cornerstone to Anodyne's gameplay. You will use the dust piles for a number of things, like using it as a raft to cross water, an important task since Yun can't tread water. The dust can also be used to cover up pits, and it is a movable source of cover for some enemy attacks. All in all, I like the game mechanic, but I felt it was hard to tell what game tile the dust would be placed on at times. The world layout is extremely similar to Zelda games. There is an overarching world you can traverse and explore. If you're diligent enough, you'll find areas that will give you an edge for the rest of the game, such as a card or a cicada. A cicada is a creature you will find in certain spots that if you catch it, which isn't hard to do, they just kind of fly around in one area, it will do this cute little animation and give you an extra life point. There, of course, are also dungeons you must tackle. They are full of grunt enemies, mini bosses, keys, puzzles, platforming segments, and of course, at the end of each dungeon, there is a boss. All in all, the dungeons were pretty well designed, and the boss battles were nothing special, but they were still fun and challenging. The worst part of this game is the platforming. Late game, you will receive an item that allows Yun to jump. I guess this technically makes it a 2.5D game. At any rate, this means you are allowed to jump across obstacles and attacks. But the part of the game that irritates me is the pit platforming you must perform towards the end of the game. The edge detection in this game is god awful. You will have a hard time controlling your character when it comes to the finicky landing, and if you're like me, this will result in your untimely death. Far more often than it probably should, I might want to add. And while we're on the subject of shitty parts of the game, I should probably add this small side note. I broke the shit out of this game more than once. It wasn't really a problem as it didn't destroy my save file and I saved often, but I had to shut down the game and reboot it nonetheless. Just look at this, it's almost comical, but it didn't really bother me all that much to be honest, but I would be remiss if I didn't state it in my review. Let's quickly jump into the aesthetics. The window size of this game is kind of weird, it's taller than it is wide. 
I would assume this is because there's an Android version of the game, but that's all obvious observations you can frankly make yourself from the gameplay here. I will inform you, I completely forgot about it about 15 minutes in the game, it didn't bother me at all. Uh, moving on to just general aesthetic looks, Anodyne isn't special looking by any stretch of the means. I didn't feel the need at any point to stop and admire the pixel art, it was just okay. Some of the people look weird, and some of the creatures are low res and weird looking as well, but by many standards it's not even close to terrible. You can even argue perhaps that it's supposed to be a throwback to the NES and SNES games. The music is a completely different story. It's wonderful. Anodyne has a pretty great soundtrack. It is foreboding and dark when it needs to be, and light and fun in the more optimistic sections. I wouldn't call it outstanding if I were to listen to it by itself, but it adds some great ambiance to the game. Finally, the story of the game is good, for the minimal amount of information the game gives you. Besides the MacGuffin and basic setup, Yun interacts with different characters, but few repeatedly. The ones that he does interact with hint at everything not being as it seems. For example, one boss says, So good to see you, Yang. Been too long. Still playing those Nintendos, I see. What's more, the game gets far darker and far more mature than I thought it would. This game doesn't look like it, but you'll find yourself swimming in rivers of blood and the game saying shit like Each generation is born from pain to die in pain. Anodyne isn't a sunshine and rainbows kind of game, even if it looks like it. At the end of the day, Anodyne's meaning, as near as I can tell, is subjective. It means different things to different people. I think it's a type of coming of age game in the broad stroke. Why I think that would take an entire video full of spoilers. So I'll save that for the distant future. But if you're into that sort of thing, I'm talking about subjective meaning and narratives, then you should give Anodyne a try. So if you're looking for a solid 2D Zelda inspired game with an atmospheric soundtrack and a thought provoking mysterious narrative, then Anodyne is the game for you. Hey, you're still here. If you want another adventure game, you can click on uh, this one right over here. It's my review of Stray Cat Crossing. It's pretty fun. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty good. It's another one of those uh, deep narrative ones if you were looking for that. To the left here, you can do Lisa the Painful. Its narrative is perhaps more straightforward and a lot more confusing at the same time. But it's a much more well-polished game, and it has a hell of a cult following. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, you should click there. Just a quick update, if you're interested in what I'm doing and why things are taking so long, you should follow my Twitter. That's where I try to contact most of the audience that is curious about that sort of thing. And I try to give you guys updates on what video I'm working on and the status of when my next one will be coming out. I used to try bi-weekly, but I've been super busy as of late. So I won't be able to upload as regularly as I was. I'm hoping to get back to it, but we'll see. I'm also thinking about coming out with some new types of videos that are not just reviews. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.